in the Congress, whenever two thirds of both houses uh, shall deem it necessary, shall propose amendments, that's Congress, to the Constitution or on the application of the legislatures of two thirds of the several states. So that's us. And that's who we're gonna focus on today. Uh, and two thirds being 34, uh, shall call a convention for proposing amendments. And that's very important as well. We're talking about calling a constitution to propose amendments. We're not calling for a constitutional constitution to throw out the constitution and start over. We're talking about a convention for proposing amendments coming to the table together uh, as states. And uh, then uh, if something would come out of that uh, convention uh, as an amendment, then it would have to go to the states as any constitutional amendment would have to do with it, whether it's coming from Congress or from the states to be ratified by 38 or more states, state legislators. So that's again, us, it's not the governors of the states. These are the bodies, the houses of the state legislatures. And uh, this is the, the authority that has been granted to us in the Constitution. And I think it's just high time we exercise a little of the authority that has been granted to us. So that's why we're, uh, we're here today. And uh, if in fact those 38 states would ratify, uh, then that would be, uh, the amendment would become part of the Constitution. We, we celebrated just uh, last year the 100th anniversary of the 19th uh, Amendment. Senator Bernier will be thrilled about that, and I can't thank Senator Bernier enough. I couldn't be uh, more happy uh, than to have Senator Bernier at my side here as the lead on the Senate side of things. So uh, in particular, this proposal would, uh, would add Wisconsin to uh, 15 other states that have already submitted an Article 5 application. So it comes through our house, our houses as a resolution. Does not need a governor's signature. It's a resolution, but it really is an application to Congress regarding the Convention of States. And uh, this application would restrict this convention to three main points. So we're already setting up parameters of what could be discussed at the uh, convention. Uh, one being imposing fiscal restraints on the federal government here in Wisconsin. We have already done a balanced budget uh, amendment uh, application a number of years ago, which I was leading on as well. Uh, second would be limiting the power and jurisdiction of the federal government. And uh, many of us here, I think, are of the opinion that the federal government has simply grown too large and unwieldy and, uh, well, is off the rails. And then uh, limiting terms in office for federal officials and members of Congress. So those are the, the parameters and on the application. Uh, we first uh, introduced this resolution less than two years ago. It was about a year ago that it was passed through the State Assembly uh, and installed uh, in the Senate with them missing their final uh, floor date. Uh, at that time, just two years ago, our national debt stood at $22.5 trillion. Already a very alarming figure. Today, just two years later, the federal debt is nearly 28 trillion and certain to grow very soon. It's, it's alarming and it should be a concern to all of us. While our founders gave us a remarkably durable constitution, over time we have, ex have experienced the federal government and the administrative state creep into every corner of our lives. And it's time we reassert the rights that we have as a state and reaffirm the age-old tradition of federalism. Proposals such as a balanced budget amendment and federal term limits enjoy broad support and deserve the due diligence that an Article V convention would provide. We will hear today uh, a good amount of the fear factor and concerns of what could happen uh, if in fact a convention would be called and, and come to be. But that's jumping way ahead of the situation. We just need to get to the table and to bring the states together. Thank you for doing the pledge at the beginning of our meeting, Mr. Chairman. The word indivisible is in the pledge and that's the states. We want to be indivisible as states 
and come together to discuss these issues. But we need to get to the table first. Quite frankly, I'm amazed that the states haven't uh, made this effort in all these years. The process outlined in Article 5 of the U.S. Constitution requires applications to 34 states, which I, I mentioned uh, out of the Constitution that is in front of you, to call that convention. And uh, be advised that simply be because an item is included within the scope of such a convention does not mean that the convention must ultimately pass that amendment to the states for ratification. Furthermore, any amendments proposed at a convention would require the approval of 38 state legislatures in order to be ratified. And to me, this immediately takes away the fear factor that we're going to hear about today uh, because I trust the states. And I trust if something is important enough to come in front of 38 state legislatures and both houses in all those state legislatures have to pass this, an amendment to ratify that uh, that's good enough for me. And I, again, trusting the states, this, uh, it's, it's a very high hurdle that our framers put together. So already the, the hurdles are very high, the bar is set so high that nothing, unless it was extreme importance to all the states and to our country, would be ratified. Even in those states, even if, again, I mentioned to us, even if one house declines to ratify, then they're done. So with just a few as 13 states, one house in 13 states would decline to ratify. That would, uh, that would eliminate the process. Going to a balanced budget is not a radical thing to require of our federal government. We are constitutionally required to balance our state budget in Wisconsin along with 49 other states that either have a similar constitutional or statutory requirement. Our state passed an Article 5 application relating to a balanced budget amendment during the 2017 session. There's two reasons why we need to pass this resolution as well. Uh, the first is that all applications for Article 5 conventions must be uniform. So they have to have the same verbiage, they must aggregate. And uh, that's important uh, that all we have these, there are 34 states all pass the same resolution. The second is that the, uh, the language of the 2017 resolution uh, simply addressed uh, the balance to budget. And we feel with this uh, resolution and application that we uh, uh, entertain those two other areas of term limits and limiting the federal uh, government's powers. So the added language of restraining the power uh, of the federal government in this resolution would allow us to prevent the possibility or reality that has already happened of Washington simply passing along unfunded mandates to states to avoid addressing the true cost of their fiscal irresponsibility. We see it happening as we speak today, HR1 is going on in, in the Congress and it would override all of our state election law. So we see it here again, the federal government moving to take, to take our authority from us. And so why, why are we here? If this way that Congress is going and, and our federal government is going, they're, they're really eliminating our reason for being elected. And uh, that's why it's important uh, that we get to the table and uh, have this convention. I'm here live in Philadelphia at the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. When you hear the phrase, lives, fortunes, and sacred honor, these are the folks we should think of, those who anonymously gave their lives. Well, today you have a chance to volunteer. You need to volunteer for conventionofstates.com, the movement that's going to save the country. These folks are willing to step up and give everything. We need you to give just a little bit. Go to conventionofstates.com and volunteer today.